Okay, I'm going to take my ochre color that's in the Pacific Northwest palette. I'm gonna mix a little bit of the yellow gouache with it, which is a very bright primary yellow. And we'll brighten it up a little bit, but it will also make it a little bit more opaque. Okay, clean off my brush, grab just a little bit of that. And I'm gonna put that in the sky a bit. And we get these wonderful sort of yellow, pink, and purple skies when the sun is setting up here where we are in Oregon. And they're just so pretty. I'm always trying to capture them in my painting. I'm just dabbing the color on and I'm trying to suggest shapes now. If I don't like the shapes that I suggested or I think the color is too dark, I can go back in again with some of the white gouache. And I'm just dabbing. And I'm not dabbing over all the yellow, just some of it. I'm gonna grab some of the red that's in here in the Pacific Northwest palette, which is a dark sort of burgundy red. I'm gonna rinse off my brush and try to grab some of the yellow that I made and bring it over to that red and make sort of something that's more pink, orangey, peachy. And we'll do the same thing in the sky that we did with the yellow. Okay. And again, rinse off the brush, grab some of the white gouache. White gouache is a fabulous thing. Now I have um, different variations of white gouache in a lot of my watercolor palettes because it is a handy paint to have when you're painting and trying to do these kind of things. But as a mixed media artist, I also just get sometimes my white paint pen and my white gel pen involved if I feel like I need to. I go back in with some of the red. While things are still wet. Okay. I'm also going to add a little bit of this tealy color to the red. Let's see what happens. If it just turns brown. No, it's still too green. Let's put, let's see, more red. There we go. I want something that's a little more purple. Again with the white. I'm gonna switch to one of my round brushes. I'm gonna choose the number two round. I think it's number two, yeah, number two round. Um, I have a purple in here that's a dark uh, dioxazine purple. I believe that's the purple that's in here. And I'm gonna mix that with stuff that's already on here. It is an M. Graham purple, so it is very super pigmented. So after you get some on there, just be careful how much you stick on here. Now the working on the watercolor ground, it's not as absorbent as your paper. So it is a little easier to lift things. We 
which isn't always the case. I'm just adding suggested shapes in. I'm going to go back to my yellow. I always like to do my skies and my backgrounds before I do the foreground. I don't like to have to go back and touch up the sky. It does happen, but um, it's easier to do in acrylic than it is in watercolor. I think I'm happy with that. Mostly. <laughs> As I go back and add white. I don't want to lose all the marks I just had. I just want to diffuse some things a little bit. Just go in now with some water, blend that out a little bit. And you'll see how that white, it just covers up, for the most part, covers up things underneath it. And if you have parts that where you're like, that's just way too dark, I don't like that. The white will work. Um, white acrylic paint will work too. But then you might not be able to watercolor over the top of it. Okay, let's give that a dry, shall we? Okay, just like with the when we did the other painting, um, let me just do something similar. So I'm going to start with a lighter version of the colors I've been using. I'm going to add some white gouache over here in a corner so I can get sort of a light blue gray color. Okay, and we are going to um, well, first we're going to make that a little more blue. It's not very blue. I'm just mixing it with what's on the palette. Using what's here. Okay. So we're going to take our little tiny round brush. And I'm going to just do some straight lines. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, then I'm going to take this brush and I'm going to do some suggestions of land. Okay. Rinse my brush off a little bit and grab some water. I would say clean water, only you, you, I don't think you can see my water bucket and it's pretty gross. So it is what it is though. We're gonna blend the color out a little bit and I'm gonna bring some of it down into the water because usually the land is usually reflected in the water. If you don't have enough to blend or it's dried too quickly, grab a little more. Okay, then I'm going to take, and I'm just going to use the very tip of my brush, and I'm going to suggest leaves and branches, just dabbing, dab, dab, dab. Now, if you're working on a bigger painting, this is a little easier to do with a flat brush than it is with a rounded tip brush, but it works. Okay, 
Then I'm gonna dry that again. Okay, so we're gonna make a little bit darker color. I'm gonna add some more of the green over here. And using the darker color, Not, not necessarily going right on top of what you just did, um, but I want you to do the same thing. Don't cover up the trees that you just made. Make new ones. And then let's make some new suggestions on the land. Carrying some of it down into the water. And then back to the dab, dab, dab. Okay, then we're gonna dry that again. Then I'm gonna take my Pacific Northwest palette and I'm gonna grab some of the neutral tint, which is sort of a dark transparent black, black gray color. I'm gonna mix it with some of the blues that are on my palette and make something fairly dark. Add some water. And we're gonna do it again, one more time. Same thing, don't put them exactly where you did already. but do the same thing all over again. Now, like in the sample piece, I went back. Now, it was gouache, so I don't think this is going to work. Yeah, it's not going to work super well with the watercolor. It is sort of working, but I went back over some parts of like where the land was with a little bit of the yellow. And we'll put some of the yellow in the water because whatever is above the water is usually reflected in the water, right? Not a lot, just a little bit. Okay. You can add, when I did the sample, I added some birds, which is fun. So take the darkest color that you've made and just do this little
So that bird is like, so let's do that again. But see, that's if that was watercolor paper, I wouldn't necessarily be able to lift that completely. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna give that a dry. I'm gonna go in with a white paint pen. Gel pens don't usually wanna write over watercolor easily, um, but especially I think when you have this um, ground on a piece of canvas, I think that's just asking a lot of your gel pen. <laughs> so just get out a white acrylic paint pen because it'll work and just sort of add some um, sort of foamy bits in the water, maybe add some light reflection on your trees. You don't have to do too much, just make suggestions. It does a lot to brighten up the piece. Like that. So in answer to everybody's question, including mine, can you watercolor on fabric? Yes, you can. Is it easy? Well, no, not really, but, but it is possible and it is a lot of fun. I'd love to see what you guys can do with this. Now, we will be taking this and incorporating this into a slow stitch piece and that will be in a future video, so watch for that. Um, but that was this was a lot of fun. I am going to um, look forward to doing this more, I think. Um, so what do you all think? I'd love to know. Uh, let's start a conversation in the comments below. If you want to share what you're doing over in face on Facebook, I have a Facebook group, A Life of Art and Self-Expression. You're welcome to join. I'll put the link in the description, um, which also contains my Happy Mail address and ways to support the free content here on YouTube and over in the Facebook art groups by either shopping in my Etsy shop or there's a PayPal tip jar or uh, Amazon affiliate links. There's all kinds of stuff. So check it out. And I'm not the only creative who provides free content um, here on YouTube and in the Facebook art groups that has a way to support the free content. Almost all of them do. So check out their video descriptions. If you can't find a way to support your favorites, ask. Um, they probably have it. Maybe they're just not advertising it for some reason. Um, but yeah, do ask. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And above all, uh, stay safe, stay healthy, stay creative, and go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it, and I'll see you later. Bye, guys.